All right, folks, here is our new Black Magic Design ATEM Television Studio HD. This is now the device that does the primary video decoding and switching from the actual cameras. I'm showing you the physical interface right now, but you can also do all this control in the software on the computer. So for this, you see uh, the one through eight buttons on the bottom. Those are the different cameras we have set up. So temporarily, I have added a camera to input one for the ASL. Camera five, I believe is the back, I'm sorry, the front camera. This is the camera we use for our sermons and when we're trying to get a good zoom in. Camera six is our back camera. This is the one on the back wall that we use for the wide shots that has to do with the video, uh, I'm sorry, the uh, songs and when we show the full band. So what you'll notice on this is we have a red highlighted button, which is the front camera. Red means on air. This is the one that is currently, you can see it in a little preview window here, being outputted. And that output goes into our computer through the Blackmagic capture device there. Cut and auto are the buttons that you press when you want to switch between cameras. So when the camera is red, it is on air. When it is green, it is the next camera that will be switched to. So you'll see six is now green. I'll hit the auto button and it'll fade between the two. And now you'll see camera six is active. Let me do that again so you can see it a little better. So I'm pressing auto. And you'll see for a second, they're both highlighted. There's a one second transition between the two when I press auto. If I press cut, it switches automatically. I'll do that above so you can see the, the view as well. So you can see the view is changing. When I press auto, it kind of fades between the two. So if I now want to switch it to my ASL camera, I'll press one and then I can press cut and you'll see the ASL camera is focused on the, uh, the front of the stage. Actually, right now, I can't even tell what that is focused on. Doesn't matter. Auto will go back to uh, the back camera. All right, now that that is shown down there, um, I will show you how it looks on the secondary monitor. The reason I like having these down here, when we're in our normal service and we're switching back and forth between two scenes, I still have two scenes with an OBS, but I also have the two scenes effectively on this sw television switcher. So when I'm pressing the switch scene in OBS, I also press this auto button. That way I can do them both at the same time. Uh, and, and once I start showing you the video of the, the computer screen, I'll show you exactly what that does. All right, now it's a shakier part because I'm doing it by hand. But I want to show you what the secondary monitor that I have on top, this Asus, which I'll replace with a, a better monitor shortly. Uh, but you'll see I, I usually keep it disconnected. There's this power connector on, the, on top of the television studio. Um, so I'll just connect that. Now it's plugged in. Now I'll come up here and I will turn this thing on by pressing the power button and it'll say no signal. It's actually a computer for right now, so it boots, but if you hit mode, it'll switch. Oh, there's a button underneath. To hit mode, it'll switch to the external input mode, and eventually you should see this window for the television studio. Let me walk you through this real quick. Upper right hand corner is the current view. This is the red, this co corresponds to the red button down below. This is the current view. This is the green below, the next, the preview of the next. You can see a constant input from camera one, camera two, and camera three. Let me redo that. ASL is really camera one. It's the first one. Then front camera is five and back camera is six. Uh, this is helpful when we're, especially if we're doing things like the ASL uh, for the an overlay on top of VLC videos in OBS. So if I'll hit camera one on the switcher below, you'll see the preview changed. So now when I do auto, it'll switch to the currently current view. 
All right. Sorry for the camera shot, but this is the software control of that. It is the same thing. You'll see below I have a green button preview, red button live. When I hit, I'm on front. They're labeled here, so this is the front camera. And if I want the next scene to be the back camera, I'll click on the back button. That updated. And here to do the switchings, I'll hit this auto button and watch those little handles. Doop, they switch. Cut, they go, it doesn't move the handles, but it moves automatically. If you really wanted to, you could also do a manual scene change, but I don't do that. Just hit auto. Cool. Now let's talk about an advanced topic. So I have the ASL interpreter overlaid on the sermon view. That is being done in the television studio. So let's say we're here in the song view. So right now this is my song view. I see my wide shot. Now if I'm looking at my next shot as uh, zoomed in, and I don't see the interpreter, well, how do I fix that? So right now I don't see the interpreter. If I come down here to the software control, I have a, a section called Next Transition. This key one is called a downstream key. Uh, this one's actually an upstream key. So the upstream key, configured on the right, has a source of the ASL camera. If you want to turn that off, you can hit black and you'll get a black screen. ASL camera, it's a position where it is on the screen and the size of it compared to what it comes in. So I'm setting it to 45% on size and it's in this position because I want it kind of in that lower left hand corner. But if I, if I don't see the ASL camera, I come down here and I make sure that that key button is highlighted. Now I come back and I see my ASL camera. So now when I hit transition, it'll be there. Now for some reason, if I don't want it, perhaps we don't have an, the ASL interpreter that day, I'll just turn it off. It'll turn off up there. When I hit auto, it goes away. Pretty cool. That's it for today. We have a Power or Google Slides document called Tech Background. It has what's set up for the sermon. So this past week was Seeing God When No One Else Does series God Sightings that Rebecca gave the sermon. Uh, we know the next sermon is going to be preached by Pastor Mike. So what I'm going to come over here. I'm going to duplicate this slide. I'm going to come down and I'm going to update the sermon title. I don't know what it is, so we'll set it to new title. And we know it's going to be Pastor Mike, so we'll type in Mike. Then I can save or I can download this slide as a PNG because it has a transparent background. And you'll see I've got a new file here in my download folder. So when I go to ATEM Studio, I want to change that background from what it was last week to what it is this week. So what I do, I come down here to this media tab at the bottom and you can see this image one is tech background. So I will go to my download folder. My newest one is here, 16. File name really doesn't matter. I'll click and I will drag it over here. It was quick, but it changed the file there. So now when I look back up on the TV, I have my new background. So that's how we're updating that kind of overlay with the sermon information. Um, over time, we could go back to doing that in OBS. Uh, I don't know the performance, and we'll do some testing on that. But for now, uh, we're doing it in the television studio device itself. I figure the more processing we can get off of this computer, the better we'll be.